Module 2, Segment 1, Creating Inventory Records. In this training segment, you will add a master inventory record, learn the organization of the master inventory record, configure history panels, add notes to the inventory record, and add alternate part numbers. Please note that this training segment assumes you have already reviewed Module 1. We will begin by selecting the Inventory icon arrow. Select Add. The Adding Part window opens. There are three required fields when adding a new inventory record. They are Part Number, Description, and Manufacturer. Type the part number and description in the fields provided. The Manufacturer field is table-driven. Open the table and make your selection from it. If the manufacturer does not already exist in the table, you may add a new table entry at this time. Select Add at the bottom of the table and type in a code and description. Select OK to save the entry. Double-click on the entry to fill it into the table-driven field. All other information on the Adding Part window is optional. You may want to add information such as list price, home currency, part type, and unit of measure. You may also want to set whether or not serial numbers are tracked for this part. Please refer to the Online Help Chapter 4 for more details of these fields. Select OK to save the new record. The Inventory Master Record opens. Let's take a moment to review the organization of the window. The top left panel displays the details entered when the Master Inventory Record was added. The panel on the top right will display a summary of the current stock situation. It will include such information as condition, quantity of units on hand, reserved, and available. Last Found Results panel will save the results of the last number searched. We may use this area to scroll through these records using the mouse or keyboard arrow keys. The lower panel displays the history of the inventory record. Currently we can see customer quotes, vendor quotes, sales orders, purchase orders, alternate part numbers, and a detailed stock summary. These history panels may be changed to suit your particular business needs. To change the history panels, right-click on any of the blue history title bars and select Configure Browses. The Configure Inventory Browses window opens. Simply locate a history display that you wish to include from the top of the window and drag and drop it into one of the grid areas on the bottom of the window. In our demonstration, we are selecting Invoice History and dragging it into the top right grid. Also notice that you may add tabs and define as many rows and columns as you wish. If you change the number of tabs, rows, and or columns, you will select the Rebuild button to apply these changes. You are then ready to assign the history to the additional grid locations. Please note that you cannot leave a grid unassigned as shown here. You must either assign a history or delete the extra grid. Select OK to save the changes. When we return to the inventory record, notice that we now have invoice history in the top right panel, as well as an additional tab behind the original tab. Action buttons are located on the bottom of the inventory window. Select the Notes Action button to open the Notes window. Here, you can enter unlimited notes regarding the Inventory Master. Select OK to save the notes. Alternate numbers may be added by selecting the XREF Action button. This opens the alternate table from which you may select Add to create a new alternate reference number.
If you wish to add an existing inventory record as an alternate to this part, select the Add from Master option. The Warehouse tab displays a stock breakdown by warehouse. The top panel displays the warehouse name and the number of units available in each. The lower panel displays the details of the actual units. To recap what we have learned in this lesson, we have added a new inventory master record and familiarized ourselves with the layout of the inventory window. We have configured the inventory history panels, added notes, and alternate part numbers. You may now proceed to Module 2, Segment 2, Adding Stock Lines.